Hi guys, welcome to Katernix Corner. My name's Terry, and in this video, I wanted to address a few questions um, that I've been receiving over on the Facebook group page, but also here on the YouTube channel. Uh, most of these questions are from beginning quail keepers um, or those who are interested in getting into keeping quail. Um, a lot of the questions are incubator related or hatching egg related. Um, so what I wanted to do was um, tackle the incubator questions. Um, a lot of the questions coming in are, what are what's the best incubator that I should get? Or do I really need this big of an incubator? Or, you know, what's the, the best that I can get for the amount of money that I want to spend? Um, so what I did was I went and set up a few of the tabletop models that I have successfully hatched quail eggs out of. Um, I'll go, I want to go through and kind of discuss the features of each one and, you know, show some of the equipment that you're going to need along with the incubator um, for hatching your eggs out. I'll also uh, talk a little bit about some of the um, cabinet incubator models um, for those who are thinking about getting into quail on a little bit larger level. So let me go ahead and turn on my B-roll camera so I can get a little bit better close-up shot of these and uh, we'll come right back and we'll jump right into it. Okay, so the first incubator I wanna talk about is um, an entry-level incubator. Um, it is a tabletop model and it is the Genoel 12. Um, for an entry-level incubator, it's actually a pretty decent little incubator. It's got a lot of features that you normally wouldn't find on a, uh, a beginner model like this, but this incubator would be perfect for the person who has a few quail and they want to try their hand at uh, hatching some eggs or for like a school teacher who wants to set up an incubator in the classroom and let the, you know, the kids watch the eggs develop and hatch out. Um, it's relatively inexpensive. It's only like 60 bucks um, on Amazon. Um, it's a forced air incubator, which is nice. Um, it also has an egg turner, uh, so you don't have to, to uh, hand turn the eggs. Um, basically, on the inside of the incubator, uh, you can see in here, it's got a uh, circulation fan mounted in there. It's also got an egg turner motor right here, which has a rod on it, and I'll show you what that rod connects to in a second. And it's also got your uh, sensor probe up here. But like I say, this... Uh, the uh, digital controls inside the computer, you can actually set the um, alarm for high temperature or low temperature, and that can potentially save you a hatch. Uh, if your temperatures start to drop or they start to go up too high, the alarm's gonna sound, and hopefully if you're around to hear it, um, you can potentially save your eggs from uh, either getting too hot or too cold. Um, but basically, what I wanna show you on this uh, Turner is there's a motor right here which rotates this and it's got a rod here and that rod slides into this little slot here on this tray and it moves this tray back and forth thus turning the eggs so this incubator you could probably fit you know a dozen to maybe 15 eggs in there and uh, it shouldn't have any problem turning them and getting them to hatch out so like I say, that is an entry level model, um, perfect for, you know, the, the family who wants to hatch eggs at home or you want to, you know, show your kids, you know, the, the whole process of uh, hatching eggs. Uh, the next model up, or not the next model up, but the, the next one that I have is by Harris Farms. It's a Nurture Right 360. Um, it is also digitally controlled, um, but this one has a um, hygrometer built into it so it will actually keep track of the humidity inside the incubator for you um, it also on the cover ooh, I just unplugged something on the cover has a uh, candling light right here um, it also has an egg turner inside like the uh, Genoel does it's a little bit different setup um, these egg turners for this uh, Nurture Right was set up for um, chicken eggs, but you can actually, in each one of these compartments here, you can actually fit two quail eggs in each one. And I've hatched hundreds and hundreds of eggs out of this Nurture Right uh, incubator. 
Um, another nice thing about it is it has external pots for filling the water, um, you know, for humidity. Um, basically what they tell you to do is you put water in one side uh, during the incubation period and there's supposed to be a plug right here but I don't use them because I'm in Florida and our humidity level is always high anyhow. Um, and, but when you go into lockdown um, you fill both sides of these. It also has an adjustment um, tab on the top and basically what that is is a vent that you can close that vent if you're having problems getting the, the uh, humidity to come up. You can close that vent and it'll kind of hold the humidity in there. Or if it's going too high, you can actually open the vent and it'll allow a little bit more air inside the incubator. So the Nurture Right 360 is an excellent incubator. Like I say, I've hatched out hundreds and hundreds of eggs with it. Um, it runs about 150 bucks on uh, over at Tractor Supply. I think I've seen them on uh, Amazon for a little bit cheaper, but like I say, Tractor Supply, you can get them for 150 bucks. Um, one thing that I do like to do on these, on all these incubators, because they have a, a plastic grate that you set the eggs on, um, it's a little bit too slick for me, and you'll end up getting chicks that have uh, um, spraddle leg because it's just too slippery, and they basically end up doing the splits. So what I do is I, I cut out a piece of uh, drawer liner material, and I set that down in the bottom of the incubator when I go into lockdown. Um, so when I, when I take this out and the eggs are sitting in there, I'll, I'll move the eggs out, I'll put this mat down, and then I'll put the eggs back in. So, like I say, if you're, if you're gonna be hatching more than 10 or 12 eggs, uh, but you want a digitally controlled model like this one, especially with a hygrometer, um, this Nurture Right, it's a little bit more money, but it is a darn good incubator. Even though it's designed for chicken eggs, um, I can attest to it that it will hatch out quail eggs, uh, no problem. Okay, the, the next model, and this is probably the one that most people are familiar with. This is a little giant um, styrofoam uh, incubator. Um, a lot of people in the reptile industry use this type of an incubator for hatching out reptile eggs. Um, this model here is not a forced air incubator. Uh, it's a still air incubator, although you can get um, a fan kit um, to modify this one. You can also buy them as a forced air incubator kit. Um, this kit doesn't come with anything. Uh, there's no hygrometer. Uh, it's just got a sensor probe and a little plastic tray for setting your eggs on. In the bottom of the incubator, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but in the bottom, you have these little uh, ribs that in each one of these, we'll call them canals or uh, ribs, whatever you want to call them, you can actually add water to the bottom of the incubator for uh, lockdown or to, for your humidity. Um, again, with this incubator, I add the, uh, the uh, drawer liner material in the bottom of the incubator. Like I say, that just helps with the uh, spraddle leg. Uh, because these incubators don't come with a, an egg turner, um, you're going to have to get an egg turner for it unless you want to turn eggs by hand. Um, you can pick up a uh, egg turner trays. Um, they come with, with uh, chicken rails in there, but you can buy the quail rails uh, and pull the chicken rails out. Let me show you what them look like real quick. The chicken rails are just, you know, a lot bigger, so it'll fit uh, a chicken egg. And obviously you're going to get less uh, eggs per, per rack. But once you put your quail rails in, um, you can get up to 120 eggs in each one of these. Um, I normally don't put that many eggs in here, and I never put an egg here next to the Turner motor. Uh, these Turner motors do get a little bit warm, so I always leave that one spot empty. Let's see, I can show you that right there, that one spot there. I'll keep that empty uh, just to protect the egg from, from overheating. Okay, so like I say, once you get, uh, okay, let me go to the price on this one. Um, this incubator, you can pick it up for like, 
$55 I think I spent at Tractor Supply on this one without the quail rails or without the uh, egg turner um, and I had to buy the quail rails. So I had another 50 bucks into the turner and another 20 bucks I think it was for the uh, quail rails. So you've got uh, you know 120 bucks wrapped up into the entire thing uh, with the turner. Okay, so if you're going to be using any one of these tabletop model incubators, uh, there are a few accessories that I recommend you pick up uh, just to kind of help you out in your incubation process. And first and foremost is get a couple good um, thermometers. Uh, the ones I use are just your standard meat thermometers. They go from uh, 0 to 220 degrees. And the nice thing about them is they have an adjustment nut on the back so you can calibrate these thermometers. Once you have them calibrated, you can actually compare them to the thermometer on the regulator just to verify that it's accurate. Um, also, for the incubators that don't have a hygrometer, um, you can pick up this hygrometer. It's relatively inexpensive. I think I spent like 12 bucks on it at Home Depot. Uh, it's got the temperature and it's also got the uh, humidity gauge hygrometer built right into it. So, um, it also has a high and low temperature. Now here in the bottom, it'll tell you what uh, the lowest temperature was in the incubator and what the highest temperature was in the incubator. So that's a handy little device just for you know, about $15. And also, if you have an incubator that doesn't have a candle on it, um, pick up just one of these little cheap candlers. Uh, I don't know where I got this one at. I think it came off of Amazon somewhere. They're relatively inexpensive. You can get them for like 15, 20 bucks. If you don't want to buy a candle or your incubator doesn't have one, use the uh, flashlight on your uh, smartphone. Um, I've done that for years and it works just as good. So, oh, another thing you want to pick up too is a roll of uh, drawer liner material. Um, you're going to use that to line your incubators with um, when the eggs go under lockdown. So, okay, let me, uh, I want to go into the next set of incubators, which are the cabinet incubators. Um, guys that want to get into this on a little bit larger scale, um, these incubators might not be big enough for you, but there are some decent uh, cabinet incubators on the market, um, or you can actually build your own, which is what I'm going to show you next. So let me get that set up, and we'll be right back. Okay, and for you guys who want to hatch uh, larger amounts of eggs, um, you're probably going to want to get into something more like a cabinet incubator. Um, there are some good models out there on the market right now. Um, probably one of the best ones I've seen is a GQF uh, Sportsman model. I believe it's number 1502. Um, it is a professional grade uh, cabinet incubator. Uh, it's all computer controlled, micrometers. I mean, it's got the works in it. So that's a good model. I do not have one to uh, demonstrate or show here, but I do have a cabinet incubator that I've built, and I know several other people, um, even my subscribers or people on the uh, Facebook group page have built this, had a lot of success with it. Uh, it's just your standard cabinet incubator, uh, two shelf model, uh, which will hold uh, 240 eggs. It is digitally controlled with an inkbird uh, regulator. Um, it's a forced air incubator. There's two fans in the back of it that blow across the heating elements and it circulates the air through the incubator. Uh, down at the bottom, you push a water pan. But uh, if this is something you're interested in, you could uh, find it on this channel. We have a complete build video on this. Um, but this is, even though it's a, a homemade incubator, a home built incubator, this, this model, this one here, has hatched out thousands and thousands of eggs. I can't even keep track of how many eggs that I've hatched with it. Um, and it has worked flawlessly from day one. So, and it's very relatively cheap to build. I think you can build this entire incubator with the, uh, the rails, the coil rails, the turners, um, the bulbs, the fans, the regulator, everything. In, in the video, we say 50 bucks, but that's not including your uh, egg turners or your quail rails. So in this video, I'm going to say under $200, you can have a working model ready to start incubating eggs. And like I, I can attest to it that this thing does work. I haven't had no problems with it whatsoever. So 
like I say, if you want to get into it on a larger scale, if you've got the money uh, for the uh, GQF Sportsman, I believe it runs around 800 bucks. Uh, go ahead and get that. Uh, if not, and you're kind of handy and you like building, um, this will make a good model. Um, you know, to get into hatching eggs, you can hatch 240 eggs in this one at a time. So, um, yeah, it, it's a good little incubator to get started with. So, guys, I hope this uh, addressed some of your questions and gave you uh, a little bit more insight into incubators and which model that uh, will fit your needs. Um, there's a lot of incubators out there on uh, Amazon. I know Brinzia is a good name in incubators, so if you can find them, they've got some decent models. Um, GQF has a lot of incubators that they sell all different sizes. And there also are several uh, DIY incubators floating around on, on uh, YouTube, so check them out also. So guys, I hope this video helped out. Um, hope you enjoyed it. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up down there. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do so. It helps me out, and you'll get notifications of any new and upcoming videos. Uh, I want to thank you for joining me today, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks a lot.